Welcome to this lecture on programmable logic devices in the course uh, digital system design uh, with PLDs and FPGAs. In the last lecture we have seen uh, a fitting uh, exercise um, in PLD 22 V10 that um, um, we have tried under some constraints to see whether an 8 bit odd parity generator can be fitted in the PLD. Uh, then we have looked at uh, the programmable technologies like uh, EEPROM, EEPROM flash and how a wired AND and wired OR is constructed out of these uh, transistors uh, which is area efficient. And we have an introduction to the, uh, the complex PLDs which is a kind of built out of the simple PLDs okay, which takes Q from the, the simple PLDs. So, today our focus will be the complex PLD before that we will just run through the, uh, the last lectures uh, material ones. So, so we have uh, basically seen uh, the 22 V10 structure, the macro cell and um, the, the summary of it that you have variable product terms, asynchronous reset product term, synchronous preset product term, you can choose combination or registered output. Um, you can choose an inversion at the output of combination section or registered section to apply de Morgan's theorem and optimize the number of product terms. An example is shown here, basic timing details, the combinational timing, propagation delay and uh, with respect to the, uh, the flip flop and with or with, without feedback you know that is that means sometime with feedback um, you know like you have extra time delay added to the array because of the input delay and all that okay. And we have uh, this was a question we asked 8 bit odd parity generator. So, it is nothing but um, 8 2 input exclusive or gates if you consider like that uh, with um, you know one uh, output is like 2 input bits go to a first XOR gate the first XOR gate output and third input goes to the next XOR gate and so on. But the main thing is that um, uh, we assume that uh, this is expanded into product terms I mean that is complete um, expression is converted in like A XOR, B XOR up to, uh, to the 8th input is completely expanded into the product term which consists of uh, 2 raised to 7 128 product terms and the IO requirements because uh, there are 12 dedicated inputs. Uh, so, 8 uh, the requirement is less than that and 1 output but there are 10 IOs. So, that is also IO uh, satisfies uh, the resource, IO resources satisfies uh, properly but we have to see the product term and when we turn uh, we assume that it is expanded then there are total 120 product terms possible, but we need to cascade. Uh, we need to combine everything together in a two pass logic. So, we need at least 9 product term to cascade because there are 10, 10 total sections are there. We take out 1 for cascading. So, we have left with 9 sections. So, we need at least 9 product term to cascade. So, we choose a uh, section with maybe the uh, the the nine product terms uh, the closest one is ten one with a ten so we re, we have to remove the ten from this one twenty so we are left with one ten product terms so when you expand uh, this XOR implementation it is not possible to fit that into twenty two V ten PLD but if you like if you think of it as a cascaded two input XOR gate say assume that. Uh, the first two inputs come here and one XOR gate that means two product terms are formed and that XOR gate output is cascaded uh, to the to the next XOR two input XOR gate and so on you know like like a chain in the each section then it is possible to implement or you take a tree approach two input XOR gate two input such four two input XOR gate um, which will consume all the eight inputs. 4 outputs that can be combined in, in the next 2 XOR gates and 
So, you will get um, uh, two output and that can be cascaded in the next section 1 XOR gate say 4 2 1 that is also possible. So, you can think of various other scheme maybe 3 input XOR gate, 3 input XOR gate because 3 input XOR gate when expanded will occupy only 8 product terms. So, 3 3 2 which can be you know given to a 3 input XOR gate and you get the output. So, various possibilities are there. So, if you the moment you assume internal nodes uh, it is possible to implement, but if you expand it to complete product terms it is not possible to implement. So, that is what I have written maybe this was not there the last time I have added that. You can think of cascade of 7 XOR gate with 6 internal nodes it is possible to fit a log structure that is a 4 to 1. 2 input XOR gates ok ignore this 9 I mean this is a mistake. Log structure of 3 input XOR gates possible or log structure of 2 4 input XOR gate that means you have uh, 2 4 input XOR gate, but this will expand it to the 8 product terms you know 2 raised to n minus 1 and then uh, that output is cascaded into 2 uh, 1 2 input XOR gate. So, all these are um, uh, possibilities various other possible maybe there are other cascading scheme you can apply, but these are kind of uh, low delay uh, sensible structures which can be easily implemented. But a default approach of expanding into product terms will not fit into uh, the PLD 22 V10 and the application of a, a SPLD we have seen it is glue logic random logic. You can implement counters finite state machine. Um, but this wide decoding is not required for many application. One disadvantage is that it has hardly any number of flip flops just 10 flip flops with which you can do very minimal thing. Uh, but still it is useful when there is more of logic than uh, the flip flops when and the application require uh, less number of flip flops and more logic then that can be used. And we have looked at the programming technology, a prompt transistor, how uh, the transistor is used as a switch. In the normal case it acts as a N transistor when charges are trapped here it, it is kind of it this the gate has no control. So, it is switched off and we build the AND gate with this kind of transistor and once it is programmed it is permanent uh, it is not volatile non volatile. But if you expose to UV this gets out and it becomes normal uh, transistor. So, to kind of remove the connection we trap the carrier charge here by applying a, a programming pulse here grounding it applying the normal drain voltage it gets you know trapped and it is removed by exposing to UV. Uh, so, we have seen how an AND gate say a 32 input AND gate is formed with this transistors. So, it is simple you have one line which is pulled up these transistors are connected uh, to the ground from the line. The gates are the one the inputs you know these um, inputs uh, like uh, one input is one uh, kind of is connected to the gate of one transistor second input is connected to second gate and so on like third fourth and so on. So, uh, when input is 1 this is pull low. So, that means it is a wired NOR to make it wired NAND we have to invert the input you see because in a PLD both the input and its complement is available. So, wherever the, the I 1 is implemented um, use I 1 I 1 bar ok where I 2 is implemented use I 2 bar because both complement and the signal is available. So, just do a swap then it works like a wired AND and then we have a wired OR structure which is again a wired NOR followed with an inverter. So, um, it does not occupy too much uh, you know it does not consume too many transistors as one thing because of this wired structure that is what uh, 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 you know the advantage of using the wired functions. And uh, the EEPROM transistor it is similar to the uh, EEPROM and flash is similar to the EEPROM. This silicon oxide layer is thin. So, it can be programmed by applying the, the positive voltage programming voltage on the gate electrons get trapped it can be also erased by reversing the condition. So, electrons get out. So, it can be electrically programmed electrically erased 
only problem is that when it is not programmed uh, this conducts normally because of its construction. So, you need uh, to put this transistors in series with with a normal end transistor and suppose you you do not want I2 to kind of make a connection to this uh, wired AND gate then you just cut it off then it has no effect you know it is uh, like whether it is 1 or 0 it makes no effect because it is cut off. So, that is how it is programmed and the wired AND, wired AND and wired OR is formed and the programming uh, uses a standard file called ASCII file called JDEC and the usual normal IO pins are used to program it there are address pin, data pin, control pin, program pin and all that. So, uh, the programmer will apply a, a programming pulse to program pin then these functions of these program um, uh, pins are exposed to the u user IO pins and that is program and then in the normal mode these IO pins can be used uh, that is how the SPL is program and that needs a separate programmer you cannot program it uh, within the circuit ok. Uh, so, it's, it's, it cannot be programmed in circuit it has to be programmed in a programmer erased in a programmer but put uh, to the board. So, um, essentially it means that you cannot use some packages which can be directly mounted onto the PCB if, ne if it need to be reprogrammed ok. If it is uh, kind of uh, one time programmable the design is frozen um, the designer is sure about it then it can be kind of mounted on the PCB directly the no no problem. And we looked at the, 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 the complex PLD and we said that there is no point in like you take a, a 22 V10 kind of uh, PLD and this already is quite huge you know you take there are section with 16 product terms and which many a times uh, one does not require that and each um, AND gate is, is kind of 44 input AND gate. So, it is a very wide AND gate with lot of product terms and now there is no point in blowing this up as, as I said you know there is no it does not make sense to have a 100 V50 that means there are uh, kind of uh, say like um, 200 vertical lines and 50 outputs with huge number of product terms. But what makes sense is maybe um, replication of these kind of 22 Wheaton structures which is interconnected ok. So, that is what is a complex PLD is that simple PLDs uh, sections are interconnected. Um, so, uh, the requirement is that output of any block like you have a SPLD block output of any block should be able to go to one or more input of other block. Suppose we have 4 blocks uh, SPLD block 1 SPLD output um, any of the output should be able to go to any of the inputs of the other 3 blocks then only we can cascade and implement some useful function. Similarly, you have input signals ok that those input signals should be able to go to one or more inputs of any block ok. And now, so the complex PLDs or CPLDs are hierarchical PLDs. So, the, these are the symbol PLD section interconnected ok. So, there is a product time array that is nothing but array of AND gates not big numbers like uh, 22 V10 where there is 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 these are small numbers say 5 product terms, but there are ways to expand it we will see that. And the macro cell is nothing but a flip flop with bypass and choice of uh, the clock lines, choice of set and preset, choice of clock enable and so on. Now, um, this the product term itself is not kind of permanently connected to an OR gate. So, in between comes a switch called product term allocator or distributor which allocates this product term to the OR gate or to an XOR gate or to control uh, various functions of the flip flop ok. So, we will see that maybe you can use a global clock pin to clock all the flip flops or you can use a product term as a clock ok uh, or 
you want to reset the flip flop you can there is a global reset pin that can be connected to the reset of the, the flip flop or a product term can be connected. It depends on the design maybe that in the design uh, there is an FSM which need to reset a counter under some condition then a global reset would not help. Global reset helps during the power on at the power on you can bring all the flip flops to some uh, required state. But if an FSM need to control a particular uh, reset then you need to have the product term as reset and that is uh, done by the product term reset uh, which is that this allocator does. This allocator allocates a product term for not only for AND gate and uh, sorry OR gates and XOR gates even to the control inputs of the flip flop ok. So, let us come back to the slide. Then you have IO cell basically which is these are uh, pins with triset gate which can be used as output and input. And at the end is this programmable switch which connects uh, the various PLD section ok. So, we have various PLD section a uh, programmable switch to interconnect them uh, not only the programmable section the IO cell also within each uh, PLD section you have product term array product term allocator or distributor and macro cell ok. So, let us uh, so essentially uh, it means uh, the 22 V10 like sections are replicated ok. So, uh, we have seen the manufacturers Xilinx as XC9500 and Cool Runner, Altera as Max 3000 and 7000, Max 2 and 5, Atmel has ATF 15, Lattice has ISP Mac and things like that ok. So, here um, this is the Altera Max 7000 CPLD, this is taken from the Altera data sheet. I um, will be using the data sheet of both um, Altera and Xilinx because uh, uh, some uh, diagrams are good in Altera, some diagrams are good in Xilinx. Uh, the architecture is kind of similar, so you need not worry. Maybe specific uh, the numbers, input, output, and all may vary between the devices, but otherwise the architecture is uh, similar. So. Uh, you we, we will be able to uh, you know understand by using uh, a mix of Xilinx and Altera uh, device uh, diagrams ok. So, this is what I call a symbol PLD section. The Altera call a lab logic array block A, B, C, D. So, depending on the device there may be 2 blocks, 4 blocks, 8 blocks, 16 blocks, 32 blocks like that you know. Now, each block you see there are 16 macro cell that means there are 16 sections of AND, OR and flip flop ok. But it is all fixed it is not variable like 22 V 10. So, you have 16 um, macro cell when you say macro cell it includes everything uh, the AND gates, the distributed, the flip flop all the programmability everything is together is called macro cell in this uh, data sheet. Uh, my description um, kind of is little different I combine the, the, the flip flop and associated um, thing I have called as macro cell, but this is just a matter of kind of name do not worry too much about it. So, now you look, look at this you have a, a macro cell section the input of it. So, here we have 36 input uh, comes from a huge switch ok. So, you can think of it as a cross bar ok. Uh, we will see what is a cross bar, but uh, this switch output is connected to the input of the AND gates ok. So, that is programmable. So, you have 36 means 36 inputs and its complement is available as a vertical line as in, as in the picture ok. So, and you have an AND gate and the, the few AND gates go to an OR gate, XOR gate and flip flop and so on. So, there are 16 flip flops, 16 section, 16 output and that can be connected to 16 IO pins or, or it can be fed back you know it is not that it can be just taken out output it can be fed back uh, to the array back. So, that the idea is that 
this output you implement some logic function the output of it can go to the input of some other section maybe it can go here it can go here it can go here some of it can go here some can come here and so on okay so all that is available okay and in addition to that you can see that not only the output goes to the io pin and it is fed back to the array um, you have io pin itself acting as input and that inputs can come straight uh, as input to the this huge switch okay now you see uh, this switch if you take uh, just assume there are only two sections okay uh, to make the description simple uh, this is not there uh, this is a device with just two blocks two labs uh, then we have you see 16 plus 16 32 plus 32 64 input to this switch and 72 output 36 plus 36 72 output from the switch. So when you say crossbar it means that in like all these 72 inputs can be any of them can be connected to this sorry this 64 can be connected to any of the, the 72 maybe the first pin can be connected to 10 then 15th uh, 7th can be connected to 6 and 2 and 9 can be connected to 1 and so on. So it is all possible connections are possible that is called and why it is called crossbar is that you know the inputs come like a horizontal row and the output goes as vertical row and the intersection you can assume a switch then all possible connections are possible that is why it is called crossbar which essentially come from the telephony old um, telephony nomenclature it is. Uh, those exchanges used to be crossbar because if there is a a, a 10,000 line exchange in principle 5,000 people can contact 5,000 people okay. So that is how like you, you that means it is a uh, if you imagine 10,000 line exchange then it is a 5,000 by 5,000 crossbar 5,000 into 5,000. So if any 5,000 can contact any other 5,000 that was the idea. Um, uh, so uh, that is is um, the basic architecture we will see the internal detail but you see here there are additional signal one is a global clock pin there could be multiple of them in this particular CPLE there is only one and that goes to this all the sections you know the same thing goes to all the section basically you can choose to clock your flip flop with this clock okay if needed it is not that you are limited with it you can use a product term to clock it but you can use this also. If you are not using this as a clock then it can be used as an input to the uh, it is not wasted like as a dedicated pin if there is no global clocking you are using then it can be used as an input to the switch and can be taken as input to one of the, the logic block okay. Uh, similarly there is a global clear that is a uh, asynchronous reset which, which can be connected to the flip flop. Once again if it is not being used it can be used as an input to this huge switch okay. And similarly you have output enable because there are tri state gates which can choose uh, two output enable either of them depending on your need or you can choose. Uh, you know to permanently enable it permanently disable it and so on. So in case if it is not being used again not to waste the pin that can be used as input to this uh, crossbar switch okay. So that you should keep in mind. So this uh, you know explain the architecture uh, from, the, from the top level architecture how the logic blocks are arranged how it is interconnected how the output uh, is able to go output of macro cell is able to go to the IO pin as well as to the input of various section. And the IO pin itself uh, various IO pins can go to the inputs of any of the section you know that is what is shown here. Um, so let us move on so it is a crossbar switch uh, so we have the this programmable interconnect array is a crossbar switch satisfying the connectivity requirement discussed before it means that any output can be connected to any of the inputs 
any IO pin can be connected to any of the inputs that is the requirement. N by N crossbar can be implemented using N N to 1 multiplexer we will see that. Um, interconnection between blocks use just one switch ok. So, it means that when you uh, take an output from a macro cell and connect to the input of a macro cell um, it need only just one switch ok. We will uh, see that as when we go to the FPGA when you interconnect some output to input most of the time uh, it can encounters lot of it goes through lot of switches. But in a PLD like straight from one output to one input there is just one switch programmable switch. So, this interconnection is very fast and the timing analysis is also fast like when you want to do timing simulation the timing model of the device itself is simple. So, uh, it is very fast the timing analysis is simple. But the problem is that the this crossbar will not scale well because if you so this can become very huge because in one section itself it is 74 cross 32 switch and you can imagine if there are 16 section this switch will be very huge and so it cannot be kind of expanded to lot of macro cell you cannot say millions of macro cell then this switch will eat up all the space occupy lot of area and then because of the, the area the, the things can slow down ok. So, I am showing an example of a 2 by 2 uh, crossbar. So, you have 2 inputs I0 and I1 put O0 and O1. So, the requirement is that any of the input should be connected to any of the output. So, you put a 2 to 1 mux um, at the for each output with a select line and the inputs are connected to 2 inputs. Now, by selecting S0 any of the input can be kind of taken to the output uh, for both and if you want I0 to be connected to both it is possible there is no problem there is no clash it is not uh, that you can connect only one input to one output it can go to multiple output. So, if you have a uh, you can imagine if there is a 16 by 16 crossbar then you will have a, to the each output there are 16 to 1 mux connected and such 16 of them. So, that is how an n by n crossbar require n n to 1 multiplexer. So, you can imagine if you have huge switches these very wide multiplexes are required and that can occupy a lot of area and the delay can be quite high in that case ok. And these are the, the MAC 7000 devices uh, you have EPM 7032 it means there are 32 macro cell. So, basically each macro cell has 16 each logic array has 16 macro cell. So, for 32 macro cell you need 2 of such section for 64 you need 16 into 4 4 of them. So, that is what is shown here uh, 7064 need 4 logic array blocks and it has 68 pin. So, you can imagine this as IO pin plus uh, the clock output enable and VCC ground and things like that. So, that is how it comes. So, the highest one is uh, there are 16 um, logic block uh, which is uh, which is which has 256 macro cell it is quite a, a, a you know big device with lot of um, uh, the macro cell 256 macro cell is quite high and you can implement uh, many medium complexity design in, in such a CPLD. So, let us move on. So, this is um, uh, the crossbar of the Silings XC9500 this is not the crossbar of Max uh, 7000 it is a Silings XC9500 crossbar. I just wanted to show the picture and that was clear in Silings data sheet. So, you have an IO pin there is a AND uh, array like which is here and a distributed flip flop and the bypass and such 16 outputs are coming to the 16 pin and the you can see that that is also fed back uh, to the to the uh, the crossbar switch um, to be to be kind of you know you can take that into the various logic blocks and similarly the input 
is also coming as uh, input to the to the cross pass which which can be taken in, inside uh, the logic block. So that is that is how the cross bar is formed. This um, uh, the outputs of the macro cell as well as the input IO pin input is going as vertical line and uh, the AND gates can take uh, you know choose any of them by programming the crossbar ok. So depending on how you design how you code these switch uh, status will be decided ok. So basically your VHDL code will be converted into this uh, kind of what switch to program at the end ok. So that is a basic game. So this is the real uh, macro cell ok or uh, the, the logic part of the uh, one section. So you have one IO pin uh, which is with a tri state gate and all that which is not shown here. So what is the uh, one section circuit is shown here. So basically you have to look at it 5 AND gates ok and you see one of the AND gate is is fed back into the array itself ok. So this is kind of can be cascaded this AND gate can be cascaded to other AND gates and uh, there are 16 section like that. So there are 16 AND gates from each section uh, can be used by any of the section. It is not that uh, this AND gate from this section can be used only by this particular section. It can be used by other sections also other macro cells also. And you can see this is the, the input signal from the crossbar or PIA programmable interconnect array. Uh, so there are 36 signal coming its complement is taken. So 72 vertical lines which can be programmed uh, to the AND gate to form the product terms for whatever uh, requirement. So basically 5 AND gate, 1 AND gate is an expander product term which is fed back into the array. So there are 16 sections so there are 16 expander product terms and now this is the normal OR gate which, which the AND gate output goes uh, but mind you this is not permanently connected. Um, there is an switch here which is called product term allocator or distributed or silence call it is product term select matrix and um, that allocates the AND gates to the OR gate or XOR gate or various other purpose which we will see that. So this is a kind of a switch which um, you know you can choose an AND gate whether it should be connected to OR or XOR or this inverter and so on ok. Now let us look at the flip flop you see that the OR gate output is going to XOR gate output input and XOR gate output is coming to the, the flip flop input and the flip flop Q is going to a bypass MUX. So here there is a 2 to 1 MUX which get the output of the flip flop as well as the input of the flip flop. So if you choose this path then you are not registering the output you are taking it directly. So if you want to implement some combination circuit uh, without register then you can use uh, this path uh, the, the tool will choose this path. And you can see that this flip flop can be used as a D flip flop or a T flip flop. So if you have counter applications you can program it as a T flip flop. It has a asynchronous reset which you see can be controlled by a product term. So that is how the switch comes suppose you want uh, to, to reset it using this product term it is possible uh, there is a connection here which the switch does and then you can reset that. Similarly uh, there is a asynchronous clear pin which now has two options one is there is a global clear pin uh, for the, the PLD chip you can use it to clear along with all the register all other flip flops or uh, you want to very uh, under some condition you want to clear it. Then you can use this line and the product time allocator can allocate an AND gate to this. So depending on some condition you can reset it ok. And what we are left with is a clock and the clock enable. The clock enable is nothing but a recirculating MUX. Um, with a, the select line as enable. So maybe I can show that we have learned that when you want to control um, a register 
what you can do is that you can put a 2 to 1 mux and if that con condition is satisfied this input goes there and otherwise it retains its value. Now when uh, the, the MAX 7000 uh, flip flop has a inbuilt recirculating MUX and the select line of the MUX is called clock enable. So uh, you want to kind of do such a structure you just connect this select line here now the control signal here uh, you do not need to do anything and automatically it works. So that is what is this clock enable is about enable A and now you can have permanently enable it or you can control with a product term ok. So it is quite versatile you know you have 5 product terms one of it is an expander product terms and this can be distributed to a OR gate, OR gate, set, clear, uh, the clock, clock enable and so on. So very flexible uh, the device is very uh, flexible and you can see there is a fuse which is a programmable register that means you can choose depending on the value uh, the value program here it will become a D flip flop or a T flip flop. So you can imagine um, a simple circuit where it can buy 1 or 0 you can switch between D and T maybe you can think of such a circuit it is very simple. Now not only that you know you see here there is one issue you are just have 4 product terms so anyway 1 is common. So 4 product terms only or combined with this 5 or some common things but many a times uh, you want to implement say 10 product terms then what you can do is that suppose the previous macro cell has unused product term say for some reason suppose the previous macro cell used only the flip flop then what can be done is that that unused um, product terms can be steered to the input of this OR gate. So basically you can cascade the unused AND gates from the previous adjacent section to the OR gate. So it is a great advantage because if you are if you need more than uh, 4 product terms or 5 product terms then if there are some product terms which is left unused um, that can be kind of steered to this OR gate through a cascade of steers you know the uh, it goes all the way like if the, the previous section is not used here it can be used in the next section and so on ok. And it can go in some devices only in one direction in some other devices it can go in both directions and so on ok. So I think you get a good idea uh, and or and this XOR gate now um, can get the input from one of the AND gate. So XOR gate can be used uh, for uh, you know the product term optimization as I said you can apply De Morgan's theorem and instead of y Im Im having y here you can implement y bar invert it and take the y there if the number of product terms are less. It can be used for programmable polarity that if it is 1 it is inverted if it is 0 it is not inverted. Uh, it can be used for arithmetic circuit like half order, full order uh, or for parity uh, all that you know all kinds of um, use you can make use of this um, XOR gate. So that is pretty much uh, the architecture of the macro cell and so the summary of that is that you have 5 product terms per macro cell you can choose between D or T flip flop. Flip flop can be bypassed for combination output XOR gate for polarity, PT optimization, uh, comparator arith arithmetic circuit parity you have program product term set product term reset or global reset global clock or product term clock uh, product term clock enable all that is possible uh, in this architecture. Now mind you um, in this device suppose uh, you had a uh, say an input synchronization has to be done we have seen how a single state synchronization can be done so there is a signal which has to be taken to a flip flop uh, to synchronize it. So in this MAC 7000 CPLD if you want to synchronize it it has to suffer an IO delay it has to come through the switch and switch delay it has to get into AND gate then um, uh, the OR gate then it has or one of the AND gate output can be connected to the to the flip flop. So it is before it getting to the flip flop it suffers a lot of delay. 
So, it will be good uh, for input synchronization uh, directly one of the input can be taken into the into the flip flop. So, such a thing is possible in Mac 7000S they have apart from all these connection from the IO pin there is a direct connection to the flip flop which allows low setup time otherwise you will have to set up the input if it is taken through uh, the cross bar you have to set it up much before uh, the clock edge. But with this it is can be set up very fast you know little time before the clock edge it can be set up and that is the advantage of this and that is uh, so from the IO pin there is a direct connection to the MUX before the, the D of the, the flip flop. So, you get output of XOR gate or from IO pin directly for the fast input and that is pictorially shown um, uh, like here you can see that uh, the MAX 7000 CPLD is like this. MAX 7000S is little different everything is same you have input you have output feedback IO pin but you can see that from the IO pin there is a direct connection to the flip flop inside ok. So, here, here, here like that. So, it has some timing advantage. So, if you choose MAC 7000S it has some timing advantage it has instead of one clock it has two clock it has a output enable which is little more elaborate and so on ok. So, that is about MAC 7000S. Now, let us take an example. Uh, we want to see like say we are showing a code how this code get translated into that CPLD architecture. So, look at this which say process clock reset begin I hope you remember the VHDL we have discussed. So, if reset is 1 then Q is 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 then under that if enable is 1 then Q gets a x or b ok. So, naturally uh, upon this is an a flip flop with asynchronous reset and a clock and this enable naturally we know that this a x or b should be connected to the uh, to the d input of the flip flop uh, because it is synchronous upon the clock if q has to get that it has to be connected to the d. But there is a control if enable is 1 then only this should happen otherwise the Q will be the previous Q ok that is the meaning of end if there is no else and this shows the memory ok. So, that is implemented easily through a recirculating MUX. So, the synthesized circuit will look like this you have a flip flop the clock goes to the clock reset goes to the reset and the Q is coming back to a 2 to 1 MUX and uh, enable uh, select line of the MUX is connected to the enable. So, when enable is 1 this A x or B goes uh, to the D otherwise it it, it uh, retains and if the reset comes it becomes 0 ok. So, that is how uh, basically it is implemented. Now, if you look back at the at the, uh, the architecture you can see that we need an XOR gate. So, XOR gate can be implemented here. So, taking two inputs here A and B and A can be connected here B can be connected through the OR gate here ok. And enable signal has to be implemented that can be connected because the recirculating MUX is built in that can be connected to another AND gate. So, then we have the, the clock and the reset and all that. So, that is what I am going to show that. So, this is the code upon the reset Q is 0 upon the clock if enable is 1 then Q is A x or B and that is a circuit um, a flip flop with a recirculating MUX select line is the enable and to the 2 to 1 MUX you have A x or B. So, naturally uh, this is built into the uh, to the flip flop. So, we connect the A x or B output to the D directly ok. So, look at uh, this uh, diagram. So, we have the flip flop uh, we have a reset global reset. So, that is connected through this switch to the clear. So, that it is when it is reset asynchronously it is cleared. The clock, we have only one clock. 
So we can assume it is global clock. So this switch is programmed for the clock and you have A and B pin which is I am not showing which is going to the, the crossbar switch and the crossbar output is coming here to say A is coming to this AND gate, B is coming to this AND gate and this particular AND gate goes to the one of the OR gate input and go to XOR gate and B directly goes to this AND gate and go to the XOR gate here. And we have an enable signal which again comes through the IO pin and uh, the, the, the crossbar switch and come directly uh, through the switch to the enable because that is there is a recirculating MUX built in and the Q is taken directly to the pin. So if you write a code like that, uh, like that then this is how the, the macro cell gets programmed. In addition to that you know that uh, A there will be A and B pins connected here and which will be taken uh, through this uh, the crossbar into this array okay. So and similarly enable so that you have to remember there is more programming within uh, within the crossbar switch. So that gives you an idea and this can be easily worked out you know um, given a code uh, we have seen how given a code you can infer the synthesized circuit and we have learned enough about the architecture of PLD and CPLD and you can work out uh, the connections and you can even estimate how many uh, what all resources are used within a CPLD. So that is a power of it by understanding the low level details um, the rather than you know just writing the code and hoping that everything uh, works properly. So you are able to suppose I give you a counter and if you work out the equation and you will be able to come and um, you know infer the, uh, the circuit out of that VHDL code then infer the connection in CPLD and, and you can see how many sec, how many pins of the CPLD is used, how many macro cell, how many product terms to that um, detail you can go and some of the tools allow you to see this detail uh, within the device and you can view that and kind of verify that it is it is right you know that what we have kind of estimated is right okay. So this shows uh, let us move to this kind of this product term select matrix I am going to this is an Altera data sheet but this for that I am going to the Xilinx XC 9500 product term allocator uh, which may be little different uh, from um, uh, the Altera because there may not be an expander product term but nevertheless it shows um, the, the idea of the product term allocator. So you can see there are 5 AND gates and there are OR gates. So you can see that uh, this AND gate uh, output one of the like there is a DMUX uh, one input is connected to this AND gate uh, sorry OR gate and this one also can be connected. So all the 5 are connected to 5 input OR gate but not that you see that if you are not using this product term for this OR gate it can be used for uh, setting it okay. You can also use a global set or reset. Similarly take this product term it can be used and uh, this can be used uh, with the OR gate or uh, you know to as an input of XOR gate. Now XOR gate itself can be can in one of this input of XOR gate can come from a product term. It can be permanently worn uh, by you know kind of um, controlling I mean uh, inverting the signal or 0 by letting it through. Uh, similarly this one can uh, go to OR gate uh, to clock it or and this one can uh, you know go to the OR gate. Uh, it can go as clock enable, it can go as product term reset and so on okay and this can go as a output enable. So the, the, uh, the design is architecture is little different between the max 7000 and XC 9500 but this shows the steering product term steering all these 5 product terms are odd and given to this structure which can be taken to the upper macro cell and lower macro cell. And you can see that what happens in that upper macro cell and lower macro cell is that so this is coming from the upper macro cell that means that there is a section there with 5 product terms 
and there is an OR gate extra OR gate that is kind of diverted here and now you see you can take that and put this is connected to this OR gate. So, you can cascade the previous uh, AND gates through an OR gate right down here. So, if you have more than one product term and this goes through. So, it can be like you can you can see that it gets it gets combined there. So, you can uh, and so if you if you look at this section you see this 5 product terms can be combined with the previous one the top one and the bottom one. So, you have 15 product terms that can go up or down which wherein it can be taken to the OR gate of that section. So, that is what is this product term steering is what we are calling. So, you can um, if you are left with if you need more than 5 product terms that is possible by product term uh, steering. So, basically uh, these are demultiplexers at the output of product term which, um, which then can be steered to the XOR input product term clock, clock enable, set reset, steering and all that. Um, basically it is steer you know that steer from the upper to lower combine various sections and use it and all that. So, it is quite useful and if you look at the, the MAC 7000 S IO control there will be a tri state gate as IO pin uh, there is output if it is enabled input it is disabled. So, there is a MAX by which you can permanently enable permanently disable or you can choose the various um, output enable uh, from this huge switch because we have seen there are output enable multiple output enable pins which is coming to the uh, to the product term um, uh, this crossbar. So, either it can come through the crossbar to this or some product term can control uh, uh, the, the IO uh, uh, status of a particular pin. So, it is quite flexible under some product term which is in some other block can control a particular pin you know. Um, so, that adds to the flexibility. This is the timing model of uh, the CPLE MAC 7000. So, it captures all the delays. Suppose uh, you have a signal uh, which is coming through an input pin. So, there is a delay incurred. It goes to the crossbar, it incurs a delay. Then it goes to the logic array. So, it, it an AND gate delay is um, incurred. And if there is an expansion by parallel expander additional cascading is added. Then if it goes to a flip flop setup time is added. And if it, it goes to the uh, the uh, the tri state gate there is a delay. So, similarly if there is an input there is an IO delay and then again it is PIA or for fast input it directly comes to that MUX delay and come to the flip flop. So, the timing is timing model is very simple and um, the tool basically the tool use this model to estimate the time, but um, you, you yourself can put this picture and uh, estimate the timing manually. Um, without even writing a code you know that is possible to do that if you have the idea of the circuit you want to implement. Basically the timing model of the PLD is very simple that is what I want to convey. So, when we compare CPLD versus FPGA so though we have not seen the FPGA um, basically the PLD still use an AND or structure 2 level. Number of registers are very small which is not the case with FPGA. Timing is simple which is a little complex in FPGA. Architecture variation um, that means across the manufacturers they have uh, the similar architecture. Uh, the programming technology is flash and the capacity is kind of 10k. Maybe we will look at the FPGA part after going through the FPGA. But the basic thing is that it is non volatile up to kind of medium complexity or low complexity can be implemented. And it is very fast the, uh, the you get reasonably fast implementation and number of registers are small. So, you cannot think of uh, the FIFOs and memories and things like that it is very difficult to implement. So, uh, the application is that very small design comprising of counters, finite seat machine, uh, small logic all that those are the target application. Maybe you can build a memory controller, DRAM controller a protocol translation, uh, some optical encoder, small uh, control circuit for instrumentation, power electronics, uh, data acquisition and things like that. So, uh, small and medium 
kind of application you cannot you can use this CPLE. But um, designs which require a lot of registers and memory cannot be implemented in this like signal processing like various filters, complex arithmetic circuit, packet processing, modems, codecs uh, like the cryptographic circuit all that will be difficult to implement in a CPLE. So, that is a limitation of the CPLE. So, uh, I think uh, we have come to the end of the, uh, the CPLE. What we have seen today is basically the CPLD architecture, how uh, it is a hierarchical PLD uh, is formed out of simple PLD section. So, there are logic blocks, a crossbar which interconnects which allows um, the output to go to the other inputs, IO pin to go to any of the inputs and then there is a product terms, product term allocator which, uh, which allocates it for various things. Uh, a flip flop with clock enable the recirculating mux fix. You have the, the set reset which can come from globally or product term. The clock can be global clock or the, the product term clock, clock enablers uh, can be global or the product term. And there is uh, in some cases there is a fast input and we have seen the crossbar is nothing but multiplexers at the output. So, n by n means n n to 1 multiplexer. Product term allocator is nothing but demuxes at the output product term so that it can be connected to various other inputs like OR, XOR and flip flop controls and things like that. And there are additional OR gates which can be kind of used to steer this unused product term to the next section and chain it you know like that to build quite a bit of product terms and it varies from device to device how it can combine but you can refer to the data sheet and we have seen the timing model which is very simple and we have seen the application you can use a kind of best protocol translation DRAM controllers, small power electronics instrumentation data acquisition control circuit can be implemented using CPLD. CPLDs are also ideal for the counters, FSM, small random logic all that ok. But it cannot implement lot of memory complex arithmetic and so communication signal processing computer architecture applications may be out of it uh, um, networking all that will be out of it. But then uh, CPLD has uh, use has advantages. So, we should focus on the advantages and use wherever it is required. So, uh, I wind up here the CPLD part we will in the next lecture we will move to the FPGAs and please revise it try to understand that that will be very useful and I wish you all the best and thank you.